So who is Chandan? Uh, hey Akshay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Chandan. I'm from Mysore. Currently, I'm working as a software engineer at Comvault, and also I'm a Google Summer of Code organization administrator and mentor at uh, Aussie. Super, uh, super. Like in 2023, I actually was a contributor there and currently working as a mentor. Super, super. So yeah, guys, today's session will be all about uh, G-Shock, Google uh, Code of Summer. So today we have Chandan in the house. So he have been mentoring G-Shock uh, since from past uh, more than one year. So today he will be uh, saying his journey, how he he participated in the G-Shock, what are the skill set required for G-Shock and uh, during the college days, how he came to know about that G-Shock, job opportunities, stipend, open source contribution, everything will be covering in this session. So without wasting much time, we'll jump to the top. So Chandan, over to you. Just enlighten us to our audience and also to me, how you came to know about this G-Shock stuff. Audio. So basically, uh, like after my 12th exam, there is like, there is a exam called KSET in uh, Karnataka for yeah. engineering entrance. Mm -hmm. So I completed KSET exam and on that day only in the evening, I started learning uh, programming. Like okay. I, I, I used to like uh, software development since my childhood. So I started learning uh, from there only like okay. while learning what, what, what the problem with me was like, even a Udemy course would like, uh, like cost you 599 or 499, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And at that point of time, 499 was a, you know, high, high price there. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, so what, uh, what I thought is to learn it for free from YouTube, because there are many tutorials on YouTube, mm -hmm. like very good ones, better ones than Udemy as well. Yep. So I thought, uh, let's go with YouTube. And while uh, learning from there, I used to watch videos of Ishan Sharma. Okay. And mm -hmm. there, is, uh, there is one more guy. Uh, there are many other influencers who used to talk about GSOC. GSOC, okay. Like, so I was, like GSOC is the you know best thing to do in college. So uh -huh. that kind of hype for uh, summer that, yeah. of yeah. 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 So what I what I felt is uh, if if that is there, why can't I do it? Like even uh -huh. I can try it, right? Uh -huh. So I thought of trying it, and in my first year, I thought of trying, and I was working towards it. Okay. Small small. Like open source contributions, okay. but then since uh, I also went into like building startups and handling a, a college club and all, so I didn't okay. get much time to you know work towards it. Mm -hmm. So I thought of dropping that idea in first year and second okay. year went like uh, with the same things. But then in third year I got like finally got some time, so I okay. thought of you know work like not for GSOC mm -hmm. but for my own personal uh, you know hobby uh, like, yeah. like a hobby mm -hmm. sort of contributing to open source uh, every day i uh, i was part of uh, uh, programs like code peak uh, like which is yeah. conducted by iit karakpur i guess not mm -hmm. not exactly so uh, all those are like open source programs where we contribute to open source projects okay uh, after that uh, this like this had built up my open source profile like i mm -hmm. contributed to many projects by then even though those projects are not that famous but then it was still an open source contribution then uh, somewhere around jan or february uh, open like gsoc uh, applications okay. got that year in 2023 mm -hmm. i guess okay uh, at that time i had no contributions to aussie uh, the okay. organization which i tried for mm -hmm. but then that's where i took up the speed like i started uh, building the project like from scratch giving it okay. the architecture everything so by the time I applied, I gave the proposal, mm -hmm. I already had made a significant contribution to that organization. Okay. So everyone knew me there, like the org admin, you know, is there and my mentor, Jaideep, everyone okay. already knew I, I am there, I exist, I contribute to Aussie. Okay. So once they knew it, uh, you can just think that uh, if you send a proposal, you are almost selected. Mm -hmm. So that is where when I gave the proposal only, I knew that I would be selected. That was my confidence there. Okay. So yeah, that is where I got selected to GSOC and that year I was a contributor and this year I was a mentor and, uh, you know, organization administrator as well. There. Super, man. So this is where this park uh, started, I can say. Okay. Yeah. So let's assume that I am a student, uh, Chandan. I am doing my third year or second year of engineering. Okay. So I want to participate in this GSOC. So I need to uh, put my proposal. So what is the procedure uh, basically, Chandan? So basically GSOC applications open around January. This year okay. has actually opened now. Mm -hmm. So once they like, uh, like announce uh, GSOC, uh, organizations will apply. Okay. So what organizations want to be part of GSOC program this year okay. will apply. Mm -hmm. So after they apply, organizations get shortlisted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So just like contributors, even organizations should apply and then get selected. Okay. So once they are selected, uh, GSOC opens up, uh, you know, applications for contributors as well. 
Okay. So that is the time where we apply. Mm-hmm. When we apply, we give a proposal, a document mm-hmm. of around 10, 15 pages, okay. which has details about what you want to work this season, like a new feature or, you okay. know, mm-hmm. a new project uh, altogether. Okay. So once you do that proposal, mentors in that particular organization will review your proposal and see if that is actually aligning with the organization's, uh, you know, motto. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what this season. So once this like think that uh, you might be a great fit, they will shortlist you in their uh, listing. Okay. So basically what happens is in the organization, when we get multiple, uh, uh, like multiple proposals, mm-hmm. what we have to do is to rank proposals from one to like 15 okay. or something mm-hmm. on your organization's uh, yeah. size. So once you rank it, Google then gives you number of certain number of slots, which will okay. vary every week. Mm-hmm. So, Last year, I'm not very sure how many we got. Mostly around eight or something. Okay. So the top eight people who we had ranked will okay. get shortlisted. Mm-hmm. That is how it works. It's not okay. that we select you. We just rank you. Mm-hmm. And the number of slots we get will actually decide if you got selected or not. Okay. All right. So once that is there, uh, they will be sent a, like uh, email confirming that they have been shortlisted for GSA. Okay. And then there will be another process for, you know, how... Okay, so just enlighten me this thing, uh, Chandan. Let us assume that uh, we need to apply to the G-Shock. We should go through the organization itself. Huh? No, actually everything is managed by Google. Achha. So you don't have to go through the organization, but you have to contribute to the organization. Okay. But apply on G-Shock portal, which is hand, like managed completely by Google. Okay, so the number of uh, top priorities will be varying year to year. That is what you are trying to say. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, so... Let us assume that uh, my proposal got shortlisted. It came around top five and it got shortlisted. What next? So once, got, once they get shortlisted, they get a confirmation email uh, from Google uh, and the timeline <coughs> and all will be put up on their website okay. on how we go. There are three types of projects uh, currently. Okay. One is large, which is like for three months. The okay. other one is for, uh, maybe for you know one and a half month. And okay. there is one small uh, project for mm-hmm. one month, I think. Okay. Like it is basically not one month kind of thing. It's like mm-hmm. hours based on hours. Okay. Uh, maybe 180 hours, 90 hours. I'm not very sure. No so depending upon that, timeline will be different. And okay. in the proposal itself, the contributor is supposed to give a timeline on what he'll work in like uh, how many mm-hmm. days. Okay. So deadline, kind of a deadline. Yeah. He should only give it uh, based on his uh, capability. Okay. So that is where we judge him. Okay, once we get like once we get shortlisted, there will be one uh, community bonding period, one month of okay. community bonding, period, mm-hmm. where people actually talk to mentors. They become you know like mm-hmm. uh, close, like understand what exactly has to be done and all. Okay. And then the coding period starts, mm-hmm. and the coding period depends upon the pro- size of the project, as okay. I already mentioned. Okay. So yeah, they start coding, and there'll be weekly reviews or even you know, daily reviews in some organizations. Okay. Uh, then uh, they they keep contributing to the project. Mm-hmm. And there will be, you know, uh, two rounds of uh, reviews. Okay. Okay, for a large project. Uh, for a small project, I'm not very sure. Might be one. Okay. So what happens is in that, in the, like, if, if the project length is, you know, 12 weeks. Okay. In after six weeks, we'll mm-hmm. check if the contributor has actually performed well and has uh, fulfilled all the requirements or uh, given, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. the timeline which has been given by him only. Okay. So we check that and then if we pass him only, he'll get the stipend for the first uh, first part. Okay. So if we fail, uh, he'll go and there won't be certification as well. Okay. So that, that's how it works. And then when we pass us it, next will be the second, uh, second part of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So after they complete that as well, the project will be done. The okay. Whatever they have suggested, uh, like they have told that they'll do, would be done. And mm-hmm. there'll be a final review. Okay. And in the final review also works the same. So we can pass or fail the student based on what he has worked on. Worked on. Okay. Uh, how much he has uh, put, uh, put in the work. All right. So as you mentioned, what I understood is like uh, an individual should give a deadline. Like within one, mo- one month of time, I will be completing my use case project. And uh, in this one month, for uh, half of the month, I mean like uh, 20 days or 15 days, there will be a mid-review. Correct? Yes. Yes. So in mid review, if a mentor get a satisfaction about the implementation, the first stipend will be credited. Yeah. So again, same for, uh, for the final review, correct? Yes, yes. 
Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned about the stipend, Chandan. Like, any talk on how we can, how much we can expect? Any talk on that? Uh, stipend is basically like uh, for three types now, I guess. Like, basically, this year they introduced one more uh, size of project called small project. Okay. Not very sure what is the exact stipend for that, but for my project, which was a large one, okay, uh, which spanned for twelve weeks, okay, it was three thousand. Okay, super. So number of teammates in the group. Uh, is it uh, predefined or we can take it our own uh, decision on that? How is it? The thing is, uh, like in open source projects, there won't be actual number of teammates. Mm -hmm. Like anyone in the world can join any time. He can leave any time. <coughs> it's just contributing to the project. Okay. So like if it's a very good organization with a lot of people contributing to the project, mm -hmm. then you'll be working with thousands of people, hundreds of people. Okay. But then if it's a small project, then uh, some, sometimes you alone will be working on it. Okay. We really can't say until unless which project you choo you're choosing. It depends on that as well. So number of teammates in the group is uh, not predefined. You can take it uh, based upon our project size. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So basically, uh, it's not like a competition. It's like a community contribution. Correct me if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not a competition. Everyone who gets shortlisted will get the same amount of stipend, will get the same certification. Okay. Uh, it's just something we uh, work towards open source. That's it. Okay. So let's put a spotlight on it. Beneficial in the market uh, channel. Let's assume that I participated in the G-Shock and I completed my project and also got the stipend and also got the certification. So I got graduated. Now I am joining the organization as a uh, you know, software engineer, something like that. So what mm -hmm. this certificate impact in the job hunt? Any talk on that, uh, Chandan? Yeah, this will really uh, give a like very good boost for your resume. On resume, if you find Google itself, it's a very big thing. And now this is a prestigious yeah. open source Google yeah. Summer of Code. If you just, uh, say it to people, many people are in such a way, like uh, thinking mm -hmm. that like you might know a lot of things. You might know mm -hmm. how to build projects from scratch. You might know how to collaborate with people. Yep. So then know the you know quality of this program. And that is why this has got a lot of uh, you know uh, reputation in yep. any institute. Agreed. any organization you apply to so if you are applying uh, and the hr or any recruiter sees your profile having google yeah. summer of code very high chances are there that the interviews are already you know you have already cleared the interview or just attending the interview so that uh, it's just official understood. thing understood so that there uh, it is there like in startups and all people prefer uh, uh -huh. Students who have already worked on open source and all, because in startups you should know everything. It's hmm. not like in MNC train you during the internship Agreed. period, but in startups Agreed. you should know everything already. So in startups there are chances where you get a job without <laughs> even. Yep. Like I myself have got many job offers without interviews, without test. I can just yep. directly go and join the company. So that is where GSOC will help you more than this GSOC. Here we are talking about open source. Huh. So open source helps you, but GSOC is a tag which adds that. Uh, uh, thing like Elite. in IA, people who study in IIT will put that IIT tag. Right? Yeah. If you don't have IIT tag, GSOC will make that up for it. So it make a highlight in your resume. I add some weightage to your resume. I can say like that. So let's just a last question, uh, Chandan. So let's assume that I need to a beginner who is participating in the open source and want to participate in GSOC. So what are the skill set he or she should have? Just a, a short uh, brief on that. So basically, if you are a beginner, I would say you should learn GitHub, how to use mm. GitHub. It's very important for any software engineer yep. and any technology stack. Like if mm. you know Python, you know, while contributing, you learn everything else. If you know web development, that should be enough. While contributing, you will learn everything. Okay. So even if you know very bit of it, like web development basics, even you can contribute. Okay. There is a website called Good First Issues. If you just Google Good First, First Issues, okay. you'll have like any list of websites. Okay. Go there, pick up an issue, and keep like try to solve it or add a feature uh, depending upon the what the issue says. Okay. And this should be enough. Like while if you keep doing it every day consistently, mm -hmm. you'll alarm second there. Like the next year, GSA, if you apply, you will get selected because you have already done it consistently for a year. So yeah, uh, beginners uh, don't think that you know only way, like very less. Even I knew very less when I first started. Mm -hmm. My first contribution was mostly to just del delete a function. Okay. People had already but that was redundant. Just delete that function. Okay. So that was my first contribution. Mm -hmm. So that, that you can start doing it as well. So again, it comes to the same route. Uh, it depends on what tech stack you are working. So let's assume that you are working on uh, front end. Uh, so what are the tech? Uh, 
technology is needed for front end you need to work on that if you are working in the machine learning contribution depends on python open source contribution yes. coming to the data engineering depends on their tech stack requirement so again it depends on your tech stack guys okay again it's yes. no there is no restriction for the tech stack in the uh, g shop it's uh, open to all the tech stacks uh i guess we covered pretty much everything and one thing uh, the chandan mentioned a website name i will be updating that link in the description you can have a link a look into that and chandan would you like to mention anything are we missing anything any tips suggestion to our audience uh, like one thing i would like to mention is do, uh, like you know try for gsoc only like you are you are looking at gsoc there rather than that keep contributing to open source and gsoc will come on its own so that is what happened to me as well mm-hmm. in the first year i wanted to clear gsoc but then okay. i didn't mm-hmm. uh, many things came up but in the third year i i was not in like i didn't even think about uh, clearing gsoc i just contributed to open source because okay. i used to you know uh, give that feel like to get that feel that i am doing something i am doing yeah. something real people yeah. are using my software so that so that that kind of an interest should come to you and that is where actually growth happens if okay. you want to so you will be only contributing to organizations are in gsoc you will be doing only things which related to gsoc and once gsoc rejects you you will ah. be done you will be zero mm-hmm. so that that, that that is where i say keep contributing to open source mm-hmm. and gsoc upon its own it's just a program you can apply so don't uh, focus on the result part just uh, focus on the process uh, you will learn a lot so automatically results will be in the positive manner and uh, i guess chandan we covered pretty much everything and if we if i am missing anything definitely i will be adding all the uh, info in the description you can follow up and i will be up sharing chandan's linkedin profile in the description you can connect with him get suggestion from him and chandan thanks a lot man for taking time and uh, joining us giving a proper insight of what g shock to the audience thanks a lot thanks akshay thanks for inviting yeah and yeah guys this is all about this talk and if you have any queries regarding the g shock just feel free to comment in the comment section you can dm me directly uh, definitely i can connect you with uh, chandan i can i can help from my end also and uh, that is all about today and chandan thanks once again for joining us today yeah thanks akshay and yeah guys see you in the next video take care